evening. Welcome to the Miami Township meeting of September 6, 2023. I'd like to call this meeting to order. We have all three trustees here. And Cynthia Powell's our minute taker, our esteemed Chief Denny Powell and Ben Guckenauer and Mr. Richard Zoff and Margaret Sullivan. Um, I'd like to entertain a motion to adopt the minutes of August 21st, 2023. So, a second. And I think you moved in second. Yeah, and maybe you have any discussion? Uh -huh. I think I saw an email where you corrected the CDC instead of YSDC. I don't remember that being a correction. Where are you seeing this? Oh, maybe it is CDC. Why is CDC? Okay, got it. It's, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a non-issue. Okay. Um, can, may we vote? Can we? We moved and seconded to adopt the minutes of August 21st, 2023. Uh, Ms. Mutter? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Ms. Moyer? Yes. The minutes are adopted. Okay. Um, I have entertain a motion to approve the payment of our bills in the amount of $48,758.29. That's general $7,445.09. Fire, $30,911.51. EMS, $2,720.55. Cemetery, $4,557.50. Road and Bridge, $3,115.64. Do I have a motion? I so move. A second. Any discussion? Good. We moved and seconded to approve payment of bills in the amount of forty-eight thousand seven fifty-eight twenty-nine. Has he been wanted? Mr. Hollister. Yes. Ms. Mitchell. Yes. Ms. Moyer. Yes. Motion to approve. Okay. And the correspondence it seems like a short list, but this this is all I have. Received some more in um, late this afternoon, but. Sarah Courtright regarding sunflower event and t-shirt sales. Mark Heisey had a public information request. Green County Auditor sent our estimated resources for 2024. Home Inc., the first phase of the project is underway. Mm -hmm. eight, eight units. I don't know when the Next door. Is. Next door. Yeah. Alex Price, uh, invitation to order chamber shirts, t-shirts. <coughs> Get them all hot. Very excited about it. And the IGS Energy, the natural gas aggregation supplier. Um, I don't think that was from them. The county, I think, is going to send letters to all our people mm -hmm. and, and, to, and the township, to, alerting them to the opportunity to. I hope. No. I think this that was the energy. letter that went out there. Okay, and it's not natural gas, it's electricity. Oh, yes. How does it actually not electricity? I don't know. It wasn't an electricity? Yes. Yeah. I don't know how they're doing it. Um, Stephanie Goff will be putting that under new business. Um, we need to set our minimum depth of fiber optic lines. And Kelly Patron forwarded four letters of support for her agritourism um, venture for the September 14th hearing. There, there was one more. Um, no, that was it. Um, anybody have anything to add to the agenda? Okay. All right. Fire department report. Uh, 26 EMS calls, uh, 10 fire. We did have a, a small rope rescue um, incident in, in uh, the Glen. Uh, also had a cardiac arrest, which unfortunately was not a successful resuscitation. Um, uh, Chris and I talked about um, the recruitment advertisements in that that we've been running the paper that um, we're pulling back on to save revenue on. Um, big one, I promoted Cassidy and Georgia to acting sergeant positions. Um, during the next six months, they'll be reviewed. Uh, if they do well with all that, which I completely expect them to do very well, actually, 
then then they'll come to you guys for a formal resolution to to make those uh, permanent. Do you usually do acting slash interim for those? Yeah. 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 Not not unusual to to mm -hmm. do that. Okay. Um, we had so as part of uh, part of the consultation in that um, I had to call ISO, which is actually the name has changed, but ISO is responsible for surveying communities, fire departments, and that's part of what your insurance basis figures out what your insurance cost is going to be. Uh, big, uh, particularly more on the commercial market than residential, but it does impact residential. We are overdue for that inspection. So she basically said to me, well, call me when you're ready. And I said, well, I'm new, so <laughs> it'll be a little bit. Uh, I'm gonna basically put them off a year. Um, that's the gist of what I told her, and she's like that. What, be, what does that ISO stand for? Insurance Service Organization. It rates the village of the township on how efficient the, if the coverage is for fire <clears throat> and, and how well we respond and everything. And then it gives us a number and the number then correlates with our insurance, everybody's insurance companies. For, for Say that again, insurance? It, you, it's insurance service organization, but it, it they were bought out and their name was changed, and right now, so the life of me, I won't come up with it. It's a really weird name that doesn't flow. Um, let's see, Medicaid 82 just come, Medicaid 2 and, uh, and the Chief Mobile actually went out for some recall work that was done. They just that was over the last two days, so they're back now. Um, I would like approval to um, surplus tanker 81, so it is technically out of service now. Uh, it does need new batteries in it to, to get it back running, but uh, it's it's extra surplus that we, we no longer need, um, particularly with the purchase from the tanker from Bath Township. Um, and tanker 81 is, uh, at this point, passed its NMPA standards for life, mm -hmm. and that so that's part of that. So, um, have you hooked up the gut deals deal? It's it is moving. Mm -hmm. um, it's a little slower than what I had hoped. I've been playing telephone tag with this, with the sales rep to get that done, um, but it's in progress. Once I've actually, I actually said to him, "Why don't we just do this over the phone?" Because mm -hmm. he wants to come here. He's a sales guy. Mm -hmm. So I just said, why don't we just do this over the phone since we're not coming up with a good scheduling time. Um, but that will happen. It's uh, that, So if I can get permission to go ahead and surplus tanker 81, that would be great. Um, I will so move. I'll uh, second. Any discussion? Uh, or best offer, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, so oh, contingent, as I said before. Yes. Okay. So we have a motion for him to surplus thing. <coughs> Correct. Any discussion? May we vote? Moved and seconded to uh, surplus out anchor 81 for Chief Powell's request. Uh, Mr. Mucha? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Ms. Meyer? Yes. Thank you. So, uh, um, just to give you a little update on, on the scheduling software transition, Nate and I have an in-service, administrative in-service on that tomorrow. Uh, my overall expectation is that we'll do a trial of that at the end of this week and then fully, or at the, I'm sorry, at the end of this month, and then make that transition starting next month. Uh, is it that complicated? Why? It seems like it's, startup time has been a while. No, no, they, they, what they did is there, there was a lot of um, uh, back end stuff that had to be turned, set up in terms of onboarding, getting staff information and all that stuff in. <clears throat> that way it's not something that we have to do in, in the setup phase for us. So there's actually been a lot done behind the scenes. Uh, uh, then the last thing is um, uh, authorization for approval of supply line purchase. Um, we're, we're in need of uh, around 3,000 feet of supply line, but due to budget constraints, we're going to uh, try and make do with 1,500 for this year and split that purchase out over a couple of years. Uh, we got five quotes on those, um, and that was actually based on the, the five quotes was based on 3,000 feet total. Uh, the price ranged from 23,000 to 30. 
five thousand. Um, uh, but we the best price we got for fifteen hundred feet is eleven thousand seven hundred thirty one dollars. All right, it's so eleven thousand seven hundred thirty dollars from all American fire equipment out of uh, courthouse. Um, so I need approval to replace that line. The current supply line that we have is at least 20 years old, which right. is an insane length of time for it actually to last. So this is water hose? Yeah, this is the line that supplies the truck from the hydrant. And just how do you intend to pay for this? This will just kind of, our general, our, our operating supplies for the time being, um, resulting in us actually making a cut to some of the capital purchases that we had anticipated doing this year. Because <clears throat> this is too urgent. He's being too coy. His supply <laughs> line. I didn't mean to be. <laughs> his operating supply line and the appropriations, which where we are today in the in the calendar is roughly seventy-ish percent of the year gone by. Uh, the department's only used approximately forty percent of the funds. So they had seventy thousand dollars to start with. They've used approximately forty percent of that. So, so that, you're saying he has plenty of money? He, has, he does not have plenty of money. No, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> that is a phrase that probably I won't use in the next four years. But <laughs> he probably has enough to squeak a sale uh, or a purchase out of that to put off some of the capital uh, purchases that we approved from Colin's request at the first part of the year. The one where you kind of, yeah. Yeah, that 20000 worth of everything in there, brother. Was it fifty? Yeah, it was probably 50. Yeah, but apparently almost virtually none of that has been done yet. Okay. And there are other areas within his uh, within within his purview that have not been used up to their current current potential. So if as we go along, if he bumps up against using all the money in that operating fund, it can be replenished with with excess from other funds that haven't been used. Isn't that right? Couldn't have said it better myself. <laughs> and it is. The hose that goes from the hydrant to the it is, it's pretty important. I don't know where it would go. So the hydrant was on the other end? Because, no. A truck. <laughs> a truck. A truck. A truck. A truck. The, the important thing is that that hose is is both sometimes it's suction as well as, as, as No, this is, this is different hose. Oh, it's a different one? Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. But it's, great. It has it has a lot of water moving through. A gallon a foot. Yeah. Okay, so I entertain a motion to the purchase of supply line. The supply line. I so move. Any further discussion? Here we go. It's been moved and seconded to approve the purchase of a new supply line in the amount of eleven thousand seven hundred and thirty dollars as described. Mr. Alfred. Yes. Mr. Mutra. Yes. Ms. Moyer. Yes. Motion is approved. That's all I have. Okay. I have two quick things. Um, any rumblings of a uh, report from Ohio Fire Chiefs? Uh, no, not yet. Um, we did get um, the final thing that we owed them, which wasn't anything slowing them down because they're already working on our stuff, but was the community risk reduction plan. Nate has all that done. The last thing we were waiting on was uh, fire hydrant flows, so that's all been submitted as of two days ago. Mm -hmm. So we're just in our, you know, 90-day waiting period, you know, minus however long we've had. Okay. The other thing is, is if you will all recall that for about six, eight months or something, I've been concerned with spalling on the cement aprons in the front and the back of the building. And that was assessed by our cement supplier in Springfield, and who, who also asked for a recommendation from the Ohio Cement Experience Board, whatever it is in Columbus, you know, real hoity-toity operation. These are experts in the field. They came out and they uh, inspected everything and wrote a 50-page recommendation <laughs> 40, yeah, 49 pages of it was pamphlets on, on cement care and cement, how you make it, and all 
parasites. So there's a lot of stuff that we didn't know. Anyway, uh, the, the man at Bryce Hill recommended a, a, a cement worker in, in the area for me in contact in order to apply, well, the, the recommendation was to apply a sealant, a very specialized sealant, which will help keep it from spalling in the future. So nothing we do about what's the condition it's in now, mm -hmm. but this is to try and prevent the, condition, the continual spalling. Uh, I have been in contact with Mr. Castle, Jason, who you have uh, talked to, and he has contacted me this afternoon and walked me through the whole process and what he's prepared to do and how much it's going to cost. And roughly, uh, it's going to run around $3,500. And um, I would suggest, or I would suggest to the board that the board cover the cost of that just because we're nice. And it's part of our home, also. You mean set the fire department? Yeah, set the fire department, and and move that we uh, uh, undertake this project uh, before the snow flies, because we don't want more salt on this on this cement. By uh, how much again? Thirty-five. If I undertake it, he's calling and telling to do it. Do you buy all right. But, I'm surprised it was 35. I, when he said it was going to take four days, I was to change, to change, to change. Yeah, he, he he climbed that same ladder with me on the on the telephone. Uh -huh. I was I was waiting for the ten or fifteen thousand dollars. Uh, yeah, that's yeah. <laughs> How long do you have to stay off? Of? I don't remember. He said it's not very, not very long. Maybe a day. Yeah, he he's going to do it. Or, yeah. yeah, he's, he's going to pressure wash it, dry it, right, and, and seal it. He'll coordinate with Danny and do two days at a time, he thought. Um, it should be pretty easy, really, yeah. for us in terms of logistics. Mm -hmm. We're used to moving stuff around yeah. like that. So. I'd like to entertain a motion that we contract with this fellow. Mm -hmm. She was magic, so with the small mm -hmm. stops. So much. I, I second it with more precise language. <laughs> What is the name of the company? Uh, it's, it's Castle Cement Service, C A S T, Castle Lake. Castle. It's been moving and seconded to approve uh, services from Castle Cement Service. Castle Cement <laughs> Castle Cement Services. That's the one. To apply a special sealant to the uh, concrete aprons as detailed in the amount of thirty five hundred dollars. Approximately. Approximately. Move the vote. Mr. Mitchell. Yes. Mr. Hollister. Yes. All right. Yes. Cemetery Roads. Dan, how are you doing? I'm doing. <laughs> hey, what's yeah, your name? Yeah, and I'm good. Uh, let's see, since the last meeting that I was at, uh, we've had a burial. We had a burial today at Glen Forest. Full burial. Uh, let's see. Topped off a few graves today. Did you have to do with Mrs. Conrad's? The oh, in Lakeview, up right, right, right next to no, the street. No, I knew there was another one. I, I knew it. We'll get it tomorrow. Okay. We'll get it tomorrow. Great. Yeah, I knew you'd ask me after that. And I'm probably gonna trim them bushes tomorrow. I'll try out the new piece of equipment. See how it works. How it it. I put the old battery in the charger if you didn't see it, so you should have two charged batteries by the time you start. I think the other ones for the soles all work too. They're a little bigger, but I, I put one in there, but I thought it. they're all the same kind of battery. So we're, we're kind of, you know. <coughs> one of them's higher amps than other, but it doesn't shouldn't really matter. It's all 20 volt, which is longer, longer yeah. lasting. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's not like you're cutting through the side of a steam ship. You didn't say which ones to use, but it's 20 volt. <coughs> yeah. yeah. And I think. The grinder wants the, and the recipient saw wants the 8, 8 well, AM. AM. Yeah, 8H eight or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. There's 4H or something. All right, there's a, we have a 4 and an 8. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Okay, we'll take care of that tomorrow. And, and I was wondering, do, do we need to seek some a temporary help trainee to learn to start doing? What do you think, Dan? With, oh. with Emma? He, he's looking. For your time off. Do we need to help or to place We an found ad? someone who. It can work, but it's only on Mondays. Okay. You know, Monday. If you need somebody, you can look for someone else. I, I don't know. I have no idea what help you'll need when, when you. Well, Ryan. Ryan's 
helped us weed eat, and he said that he'd be interested in weed. You know, worked on Mondays, it's his day off. Well, his one Monday is, is not going to replace your yeah. five days a week, eight hours a day. Four hours. For is this, how long are you going to be incapacitated? I don't, I don't know yet. But what did they say, six, eight weeks? Or? At least four weeks in a swing. But not, six, eight eight not until starting next month, right? Possibly. So I don't have it. September now, the October. don't have a day on actual repair yet. Sometime next month. So, so your your right arm is going to be in a sling, and your left handed. <laughs> he's what getting, are we he's getting a major. <laughs> I'm kidding. Sorry. I'm kidding. You're facetious. I mean, just, I, mean, I guess I'm sorry. asking somebody that need to know how to use the snow plow or something. I mean, do we need to look ahead? Like. I need to, or I know how, but you don't want me to do it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to try roll, street, roll the truck twice. If we fix the backhoe, I can, I can run the backhoe. That goes fit. <laughs> I mean, well, I don't, yeah, I don't know. I, I think I'll be back in action with the snow flies, but you know, okay. you know, I don't know yet. Still. Brad, mowing, mowing will be under control. Mowing is slowing down. Oh, mowing will be done. So this is kind of an ideal time, just kind of after, after grass and before snow. Okay, I will worry about it then. But if you need help or we need to place an ad or he knows, call people, let us know. Right, I'll know a little bit more. Okay, after the fourth of October. Okay, roads. Let's see, I'm going to finish trimming tomorrow my last road, which is the you circle know, circle, Glen Road. With the boom work, and that little trimming. Like I said, trim the bushes at some point. I got a list together of things for Brandon to do while I'm gone next week. I'll be gone for a week. Mm -hmm. But he pretty much knows. But we made a list of some of the other things. Okay. Stay busy. Remember, you have a limit of how much money you can take. Oh, I know. I know. Oh. I, okay. um, I made a quick trip around the other day. Um, did you or will you trim, trim some more on Snip Road? I will move okay. back out because some of it's grown back out. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and and mow it sometime. Right, that's the next move. I got Larkins day before. Larkins, I wanted to talk about Larkins, uh, Marilyn and Don. If if you haven't been out lately, if you're out just wandering the streets of Miami Township in the next couple of days because it's going to grow, okay. take a look at Rock, Larkins Road because in my opinion, it's the example of the premier condition of the township roads exactly the way we want township roads to be. We just fog sealed it so it looks all nice and black, the road does. <laughs> it's trimmed back perfectly so there's, there's no problems about, and, and, and it's mowed down to the, to the nub. So you, you can't ask for anything more on one township road. Not so the other well, ones are, are closed, but yeah, I don't know. Special they're not bad. I got some little creep out on, like you said, snip road mm -hmm. used a little bit. I'll, I'll just run down and hit this. In Grinnell Circle. That's tomorrow. And East East Hyde. East East Hyde. East Hyde. You did get the Johnson grass, but there's other areas oh, that are... Yeah, I just knocked that there. Yeah, you know, okay. Right, I'll just be back up down. there. I've got to say I was on Grinnell Circle two days ago, and I thought it was wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> Different structures, different folks. South River might might eventually need a little mowing along here and yeah, there. Yeah, we're going to make a round and do the actual ditches, because once the trimming is done, so. And there is a, if you haven't been there, there's a substantial limb, limb on, the, on, the, on the berm on the edge of North River. Not anymore. Not anymore. Okay. Right. All right. Great. As I say, this is a little, because of the holiday, I didn't get right on top of it. I grabbed a wire out there when I was trimming the last time from somebody's internet. <laughs> didn't know I caught it. But got called and found the wire, and there's no place. Where it, hooks. I, it was in the grass, they made it in the grass. I didn't see it. Mm. Instead of doing something with like running along the fence, but we don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they just laid it in the grass and I got a hold of it. I didn't see it. I didn't even know I hit it until someone called about it. Mm -hmm. I went out there and found it. And Crazy. Couldn't put it back together. Mm -hmm. I don't know what they did. Hopefully That's all I think. That's all I had for. Did you see on the phone still? Yeah, yeah. it's all look good. It looked okay. I thought they did a fairly decent job. Okay. I see a couple of light spots here. Exactly. There's there a few. And I talked to Paul about that and he's gonna let me know what 
with the county if yeah. you're going to come back. And some of them are just small spots where yeah. he's, he, he's going to let me know what they're going to do. But all in all, I thought it was a pretty fair job. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then paving for the brand, I haven't heard yet. Well, that reminds me. Why did, am I crazy or did they fog Brown? No. Well, good. Uh, that company two years ago, three years ago, two years ago. Okay, it just seemed like a crappy job of fogging, but that was the company not, out of not bad enough that we needed to blacktop it. I mean, just surface look. It's the it. same company be, before last year mm -hmm. that we do such a great job. Yeah. Okay. But it'll be overlaid. It's going. To, it's going to be one of the sure. mm -hmm. Like Brian Park will be right there. Yeah. But they'll be happy. I think they will. So I, I don't know when that's going to take place. Kim and Stacy hadn't called me or anything. Yeah. It's marked and they know. They seem to be able to black out nowadays into November, December. They must be going to do something on Dayton Avenue. There's signs everywhere. They must be going to because they're oh, they, milling. They, and, they've milled the whole thing all the way into Fairmore. All they have? Yeah. So they're past the Wait a minute. That's they're, not Township Road. No. That's, <laughs> they're past, they're past <laughs> 235 <laughs> now, our direction. That's not okay. But they're going to come all the way to the Billy Jones. I, yeah, I saw it sniff. Okay, I just should ask you. Sorry, sorry, I didn't mean to yeah, waste 30 it? seconds there, Don. <laughs> Our esteemed fiscal officer, great to have you at your, our meeting. Yeah, it's great to be here. <laughs> to see okay. you here, okay. Okay. Okay, sure. yeah. um, Do you want me to go ahead and do this? Sure, this whole thing. Unless Cindy wants to. No, I, I, you're, she's darn good I, at it. I've usually done it, but I don't care if we have three of us. Oh, I don't care. Go ahead, Margaret, just for oh, the right, sure. time's sake. Um, this is Resolution 2023-36, Amendment of Permanent Appropriations. Whereas it is an ongoing process to accurately appropriate funds according to the needs of the township there. Now, therefore, the trustees authorize amending the following appropriations. In the general fund, increase advertising by $500. In the gas tax fund, increase machinery equipment by $6,950. In the cemetery fund, we increase electricity by 180 and other, which is basically a new line that I created because of the unusual circumstance. Um, but I, so that was, I put $1,500 in there. And that was um, due to um, a resident who had purchased a grave site in the Oak Grove Cemetery and then realized that she had already donated to whatever the name of the folks are that um, um, will come get you and bury you for free once you make a donation. Don probably knows who they are. Um, anyway, so that's that. Anyway, and then the fire fund increased um, contract of services by 5,400. 54,000. Mm -hmm. That's what I was thinking. Okay. It's not going to be the Quakers. Oh, the Miami Charles of Trustees Office is a fiscal officer do so over that I, I move for approval. I second. Uh, I vaguely remember we already had a number 36, but I may be wrong on that. I shared that. I'm not seeing it. So we had a 35, the last one? 35, was 35. 35. Okay. okay. Anyway, I second the vote. Any further discussion? No. May we vote? Yes. The move and second to adopt resolution 2023-36, amendment of permanent appropriations is enumerated. Mm -hmm. Mr. Witcher? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Ms. Meyer? Yes. The resolution is adopted. And I just have one question. I'd love seeing that um, special fire levy go up with that extra, you know, the last of it. And, and there were like three other ones that also, I'll talk to you about it later. Oh, okay. Special levy. Well, the fire levy. Oh, you're talking about any of uh, Yeah, like, like, they, like they had settled the counts and they boosted up, and there were like four of them they boosted. But I was I was laser focused on fire, so I didn't notice that the other one up. But I could check myself. Please, that was hoping for Okay. Um, I'll talk. Building inspector. Hi, Richard. What's up in the um, Since I last sat with you, I've only issued one permit, and yeah. in a funny way, it hardly counts because it's the same permit that I issued a year ago. They just didn't get their building started, so they had to come in and 
the building permit only lasts for a year. And this is uh, for an accessory structure out on Hill Road. The <coughs> zoning commission sort of operated in a fog. Well, not everybody was in a fog. Brian was in a fog. His, his mother is having some serious health issues. And it's been incredible. He says he isn't sleeping very, very much. But anyway, they continue to, they spent half the meeting working on the, the temporary use exemption language, and they spent the other half the meeting working on solar zoning. Um, they asked me to do some research, and I've been getting some information from regional planning on how you quantify solar. In other words, you talk about how many, how many square feet of panels you can put up, or how much electricity you can generate, um, you know, in other words, if you're going to say, you know, it can only be so big, how do you say what big is? And um, so I've done that little bit of homework and I'll hopefully get put into the mix at their next meeting. Uh, the other, um, the VZA is still meeting on the 14th, although yeah, they're still meeting on the 14th. And, but they're going to have, there's going to be two issues heard at that meeting. Uh, the Patron's um, request for an administrative review, and then the Chamber of Commerce, uh, on behalf of Sharon and Dave Newhart, for a temporary use um, exception in order to sell t-shirts at the Sunflower Field. Um, I don't know if, if you all know, I mean, a brief history. The sunflower field has been planted in sunflowers for, for many years. The number of people coming to visit it has gone like a logarithmic curve. Last year there were an estimated 20,000 people stopped by to see the sunflowers. The, the New Hearts had said to the land trust, if you can take advantage of this, go ahead. So they kind of managed the operation. It was they who were behind getting the speed limit lowered because they were so concerned about the traffic and you know people rubbernecking and parking on the highway and worked very hard to get safer parking and realized at some point that they they couldn't handle it with their volunteer help and hired Green County Sheriff deputies to manage the, the traffic and parking and people did respect them and that made the whole situation safer. But that was a considerable investment. Uh, I think it was $5,000 the last time the land trust engaged them. And, and it just was not practical for them. You know, the amount of contributions they received didn't, didn't match $5,000. So they asked if the Chamber of Commerce was interested in taking it over. Because the Chamber of Commerce eyes kind of light up and they say, oh, 20,000 people in the, in the neighborhood? <laughs> Please come on on down to Yellow Springs. Um, and they did did it last year. I don't know exactly how it was operating, but again, they had the same situation where they didn't generate enough income from, from people making donations or how that was working at the site to fund the, the, um, the sheriff's deputy. So they're going to supplement, they want to create more income by selling t shirts. Um, and, and when it was originally presented to me, it was just going to be, you know, like a t-shirt with a sunflower on it. Or, you know, or I visited the sunflower. But now it seems to become an advertisement for the most famous business system. And we got an email about that. Mm -hmm. You mentioned you correspond. Anyway, so that that um, will be the second item at the, at the meeting. I hope nothing happens to any of my BGA members because I've got, I've got, um, Got five, I've got four BZA members and one alternate, so five all together, but I have one member who is knew well in advance of all of this that he's going to be on vacation and not available. And then on the, the Sunflowers, obviously David Newhart will not be able to participate in that decision. So there will be the critical three people for that one, and hopefully four people doing, working on the, on the Patrons. Which is sufficient, but... Did you advertise the Sunflower ones yet? Yeah. Yeah. This week, um, you no, don't really have an alternate anymore because I believe we appointed him last meeting to, to take a seat to no. replace Barbara from no. Chicago. 
there was discussed, there was nothing. Oh, I, I, we mentioned that Barbara Krebeck <laughs> resigned. You didn't appoint, I don't believe you appointed Eli. We could do that right quick. I wonder why we didn't. <laughs> yeah, I didn't think of it. I thought of it. For some reason, I was thinking it was automatic. Well, if you're an alternate, so the fact though he is going to be participating, yeah. sure. Now, because he's he's always going to be needed, it means as much as anyone else. Do we need to ask him before we um, promote him? Nope. Okay. But I'd entertain a motion to um, appoint appoint Eli Hurwitz. All right. Is that to uh, fill out the remainder of yes. Barbara's term? Yes. I so move. A second. Further discussion. What is Eli's last name, please? Herwitz, H U R W I T Z. Can I move and second to appoint Eli Herwitz, um, BCA alternate, to fill out the remaining uh, term for the Barbara Craigback. Craigback, who has had to resign. Uh, Mr. Hollister? Yes. Mr. Mucher? Yes. Ms. Moore? Yes. So approved. Anything else for Tony? Um, Richard? No, no, I, I don't think I have anything. We'll give our new camera spin on that night so we won't need minutes. Yeah, but I assume you would arrange. I have one additional thing, and I sincerely apologize for this being another letter that I'm going to read, but I don't want it in the minutes. It's just, but I don't know why I've gotten into this letter reading okay. routine. But this is a letter that we received uh, the other day from uh, a man named um, Zat Barazato, which is not exactly his real name, but that's, that's close to what it has to do with the Patron request for uh, uh, the BZA variance. I'd like to read this to you. It reads, Dear Kelly, Judy and I would be okay with your proposal. Last year, when we put in our driveway, the contractors noted a problem that they were having with Miami Township concerning getting a permit to build on lots that were on easements and didn't have the required road frontage. I did a little research and found what I believe is an interesting approach to solving their problem. The Ohio Constitution makes make protecting property a critical function. The Township Zone Code imposes limits on using your property. I believe that those limits violation, violate the Constitution. There is an approach to restoring your property rights that goes back to common law. It uses a tool called Juric Affidavit. If you want to talk about it, we'll be home for about in about 10 days. I have samples on my own computer. The zoning regulations are in violation of the Ohio Constitution because they arbitrarily limit your ability to use your property. I believe the zoning code can be modified or overturned with little effort, no lawyers, and almost no cost. Now, everybody is entitled to their opinion. And everybody can express it any way they want. However, when they besmirch or uh, disrespect, as I've been uh, uh, talking about lately, Miami Township, that is a, a whole different matter. Are they I feel they're, I personally, I feel they're disrespecting I mean, Miami Township and the, the township form of government in the state of Ohio by this, by this letter. Well, that letter suggests, but I read it, I thought, well, if that letter were true, zoning wouldn't exist. Is that how I'm reading it? If that letter were yeah, that's that's true, I'm so, so, mm -hmm. that, that, so I wrote it off. <clears throat> Well, I guess you could write it off as a crazy person. I also no, I read didn't it. Write, uh, for the record, I didn't write it off as a crazy person. Not you a crazy person. <laughs> no, crazy person. Nor did I call anyone a crazy person. All right. I just thought, well, if there was no zoning, we could do whatever you want, wherever you want. We could build an amusement park and John Bryan won. That's right, you could. I personally feel that these comments uh, disrespect Miami Township and Township government. Now, the reason that I bring this up is that Miami Township for the past few years has provided Mr. Barazado mm -hmm. the Township Road Department facility so he can run his business providing internet to residents of Miami Township. He has antennas out there, he has cables out there we've allowed him, he's got equipment out there, he uses our electricity out there, mm -hmm. all while disrespecting the, you know, the, the Township. 
yes, he does let us um, piggyback, or what it's called, an internet service off of his system. But that was secondary. That was not part of the, you know, that was not part of the whole original deal. Now, I'm upset enough that I would recommend that we ask Mr. Barzato, Barzato to remove all of his equipment within seven days or it gets disposed of. If he's going to, if he's going to consider Miami Township to be uh, uh, non-essential in, 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 in uh, uh, zoning and, plan, and land use planning in the, in, in the state of Ohio, I don't think we need him on our property giving him free service and free access. I think this is something worth discussing. I'd like to uh, move slowly. Why is that? What is it about you need to move slowly about? Well, for, for, for me, one thing I would like to discuss it with him directly. <laughs> okay, that's fine. I'm sorry, go ahead. Um, you. Well, this is the first I've ever heard of Mr. Barzata. Or, or I can't even. I can't even picture the, the location you're talking about. This this operation you're talking about is like brand new to me. I have no idea. Like it's in the township like, office. Like over on the one side? No, in the township office. Where, like where I would have been next to the, the garage. Yeah, garage. Yeah, 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 yeah. Where, That's where, what I meant. Where Dan's desk is. Okay. Um, it, it, it seems, um, what, what's the word? Not reactionary. Um, not disciplinary, but there's another word. Um, seems like retribution. Feels like retribution. And I, I don't know the nature of- I think it's an equivalent response to a, um, to a disrespectful communication. Take that or uh, no, no I don't. I shut it off. I, I, so you are the chair. You can you you can you can move this along as you as you please. I am not going to let it go. I suggest we put this on the agenda for the next meeting, and I will reach out to him. I suggest we move to remove his equipment within seven days. I would not. Okay. So let's let's move along. Okay. Would you like to put on the agenda for next time? Um, discuss it. Uh, have, confront him with it. I think Mr. Hollis was making a motion to do that. Okay. Well, I, I don't, don't think there needs to be a motion. Okay. Well, I I don't want to put it on the agenda next week. Okay. Next meeting. How's that? Okay. Okay. Well, I will. I will uh, go talk to him. All right. Okay. Any more for me? I'm, I'm tempted to, to say something on this subject, but I think let's keep the meeting short. Okay. No, I don't have anything. Um, standing committee reports, MBRPC, I'm going there in the morning. Uh, uh, usually we second. don't. What's going on? on first but meeting this is the time. That's fabulous. <laughs> it is. <laughs> um, new business. Set the underground fiber depth requirement for Miami Township. Did you receive this email, Don? Yes. Um, do we need to explain it or just, oh, we have to decide. If we're, we have to make um, a decision on it. Um, is there a recommended depth from the well, engineer? Well, there is a recommended depth from the engineer, which is 42 inches. The Green County Commission has given one of the companies permission to go 24 inches. The, the Green County engineer, in response, has sent out to the townships to say, we think that's not fair and we think that's unwise. Here are a zillion examples of how, de how deep people are going fiber op optic, and they range from like 30 to 60, which is many, many around 46, 48. And um, they gave us an example. Ross Township is, is, is saying, had made a motion last, their last meeting to 
you know, 48 inches minimum with a preference for 60, that seemed extreme. And I would suggest that we just go with the Green County Engineers recommendation of 42 inches. We are one of two <coughs> townships that they're actually doing the permitting for, that we're allowing them to do the permits for us. So that's another factor. I'd like to say based on some years of experience that the, it's true that things like telephone lines in the past have been allowed to be relatively shallow. shallow. I mean, the, the, the gas lines, for example, have to be 30 inches or more. And the problem is that a, a, a telephone line like running to your home and it gets cut, it's no big deal. When you cut a fiber optic line, you've knocked out huge amounts of service. Okay? And yes, it's become much more easy to repair them than it used to be in the past. But nevertheless, it's something that you don't want to have happen. And two feet isn't very deep, especially when one foot of that can disappear because a, 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 a swale was, was cleaned or, or whatever. And no, I, I think that it would be foolish to allow a to be set two feet. Deep. Well, I appreciate that because I had no more way to judge it <coughs> except for it sounded shallow to me. What would be done where the bedrock is closer to the surface? That and rock stands to trench the rock. No. And, and I imagine that the, um, the, the motivation for the commissioners or or that the company asked was to um, save time and money. I I don't know what the motivation would be. The commissioners also recognize there are circumstances that specifically under going under township roads. I, I'm not really sure why the road is supposed to, but they do understand that there is a necessity to go deeper than the 24. This would be, um, you know, all the other. Because yeah, your base of your road could extend that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Any other well, I'm going to move. And, you know, just move things along. I, if you don't have any more discussion on this, I, I would move to uh, let the county engineer know that we agree with her recommendation versus the commissioner's. And, and I say that for, for mainly one reason. We got a letter from, well, this was, a, we didn't get a letter from the commissioner's. She included a letter from, commission, from the commissioner's to her office and, and whoever else, saying that they have decided that instead of following the normal 42 inch depth. In this particular instance, in this particular company, they will allow 24 inches. That, and that's it. They, they, they no provided no data, no studies, no resources, no recommendation. It was just, this is what we're going to do. Now, that's assuming, I guess, three county commissioners have the expertise to decide that. I don't know, but they didn't provide that. Right. The county commissioner, and I don't want to get in between commissioners and the, 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 uh, the engineer. No. Not, not whatsoever. But we got to pick one or the other. And she provided a very complete, well thought out, and, uh, uh, and, and stated reasoning that 24 inches was, was, not, was not enough. And supplied multiple additional jurisdictions and, and government or whoever regulators or experts at you know the, the 42 inches is, is the way it's, it's not hard to drive a fence for 24 inches in the ground uh, yeah. <laughs> so that's the reason that i'm going with her recommendation because i don't personally know what way that so, I mean, so you made a motion to go with 42 inches i have a, a mm -hmm. one writing here there we go. Okay. anticipating and i can get him i make a motion that we follow the recommendation of the Green County Engineering Department and hereby require that underground fiber lines for broadband and the unincorporated areas of Miami Township be buried at a minimum of 42 inches. 42 and 42 sounds good? I don't, I don't want to complicate it with trying to pick some other. <laughs> so who's making that yeah. motion? That was my question. Please quit, Mr. Stephen, would you start it? I'll move. I second. Okay. If I could get a copy of what you read. Yeah. Okay. Move and second it to you. <clears throat> I agree with the county engineer on the depth of underground fiber at 42 inches as laid out. Mr. Mutcher? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Ms. Moyer? Yes. Motion's approved. Thank you. 
Um, I also have a resolution here where you get our estimated resources from the county for next year. How much estimating our taxes and our budgets, not our budgets, our um, resources. And I guess I must read all this. Huh? It is up to me? It is up to you. Um, this is quite lengthy. Um, well, is there a key sentence that would characterize it? The resolution, accepting the amounts and rates as determined by the Budget Commission and authorization, authorizing the necessary tax levies and certifying them to the county auditor. That's what we're doing. Um, so I'm interpreting that as they're reviewing when they say rate, how much the levy rate will need to be to raise the money that is, that is, I'm trying to make the point that levies often go down to deliver the same amount of money that's... Well, millage. Millage, yes. Goes down. Um, I'm not sure they're estimating the millage, but... I, I didn't know. look closely at that. But. Mm -hmm. This is estimated because they haven't figured in the exact re reassessment of property right. uh, for Green County yet, which is coming soon. And they haven't figured in what changes any local levies would have, because this is, encompasses the whole county. Uh, for example, you know, of course we're not a school board, but if we had a new levy on the ballot this fall, this would not take that in, our, our resources would not take that in. Consideration. So, that's so they're just doing like a draft that could something. They're, they're making their own. Yes. Yeah, something that What's we can that? work. Work. With. Well, I mean, I support it. I'm just trying to make a public point that millage goes down as on most levies. Millage goes down as uh, property, property valuation more. goes up. Right. Well, yeah. Another way of saying this is you can expect to get the same amount of money from the levies that you did last year, this coming year, except for the inside bills that fund the township gets no matter what, which will go up. Right. That's, that's pretty much it in a nutshell. Thank you, Richard. All right, then. We're all again this. Um, I will move that we accept. The amounts it reads. And I second. As presented by the county auditor. Yes. Resolution 2023-37. All right, may we vote? It's been moved and seconded to adopt uh, resolution 2023-37, accepting the amounts and taxes, amounts and rates as determined by the budget commission and authorizing the necessary tax levies and certifying them to the county auditor as presented. Mr. Mutra. Yes. 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 Resolution is adopted. I think, last but not least, um, we think we found our, our water fixture for um, the natural burial area. Mm -hmm. And um, by found, you mean a design that that we like, like that we both like. wholeheartedly disagree <laughs> upon. That was a reasonable price mm -hmm. and beautiful. And we don't have to put it in ourselves. <laughs> oh, it looks good to me. And it's, it's, it's roughly thirty-five hundred dollars, so we have to put a price on this. And so, what what do we need to vote on tonight? Should I call it? this guy's business is Marvin Gardens, Martin Water Gardens? So, um. well, I would move that we contact. Mr. Weber does, and and ask him to begin the process of uh, assessing our location and consulting with you on a design. Although we have an ex we have an example of a design that we like, and you know if he thinks that would go into the location and what we would need to do and all those sorts of things. I I I move that we. You did. I already did. I'll second. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it is long enough. 
Sorry, she stopped. It was a long yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I was the move in second at the contact Marvin Water Gardens. Is that correct? Yes. Uh, to begin the process of uh, designing and installing a water fixture for the National Burial Cemetery and an estimated amount of $35 million. Um, Mr. Mr. Mucha. Yes. Mr. Hollister. Yes. Mr. Hollister. Yes. So, and I think the Marvin Gardens thing is right next to the Hino Railroad. <laughs> you have to name the road from since oh, we into the cemetery and then they're on landing. <laughs> Roll the dice. Um, I, would like, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. I think you'll second that one. I'll second. Did you all say aye? Aye. Aye.